So I have an idea today. Here's the thing. I hate terracotta pots. I think they look so ugly and just bland. So, but I realized as I'm upping my plant game, I also need to make sure that I have terracotta pots because certain plants don't like plastic pots. Well, technically none of them do, but you know what I mean. So I've come up with a compromise. I've got some terracotta pots, some small ones, some medium sized ones. I'm probably gonna need to get some bigger ones down the line, but for now this is good. And I am going to paint them. Now these seem black, that, that's, this one's black. This one's like a di really dark diazine purple, whatever. Anyways, so I'm going to paint them because I think that way we have an understanding. They get the pots they want and I get the pots I want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so stressed out with school and everything. I'm just so done that like, it'll be nice to just kind of not do anything except just chill with my pots. Maybe I'll watch a Halloween movie while I'm doing this because it's two weeks too, so. Anyways, I'm going to do a long recording of this, so. Hi everyone. So obviously, <laughs> It's been a long time uh, since I made this video. This was made in October 2022. It is now June 8th, 2023. So it has been a long time. The reason why it took so long to post this video and many of my other videos I mean, I've always been a little inconsistent, a little. <laughs> um, the reason why this video felt very hard to produce was uh, the first term I was very busy with two specific things along with work. Like I was also working part time. Um, I was in class full time and I also had, um, I was part of me. I was also part of the social media rep representative. I was the social media representative of the Archaeology and Anthropology Society, now named as the Anthropology Society at University of Saskatchewan, which is where I study. So a lot of my social media presence was mostly focused on that because I needed to make sure I was weekly updating. I definitely didn't every week, but I feel like in terms of my consistency, I did pretty well, but I was also very busy with this other course. It was called Human Evolution. If you have attended University of Saskatchewan and you've taken this course, Archaeology Human Evolution, a very tough course, and it requires a lot of attention. I'm pretty sure I barely did anything else that term except study for that class alone. So actually when I was painting these pots, I would sometimes, <clears throat> you know, miss a day or two of class because I was studying for the other class. So I would watch back lecture videos of the other classes in the meantime. So I was actually watching one of them during this painting uh, pot. I pretty sure right about now I was watching uh, a lecture video on my philosophy of Aristotle class which was specifically the metaphysic metaphysics of Aristotle which I will not get into in this video if anyone actually wants to hear me talk about that there are uh, let me know but there are thousands of philosophy videos on YouTube and I don't even know if I would adequately explain it so probably don't recommend that. <laughs> um, in the meantime, though, clearly I was, you know, struggling to focus. <laughs> I also watched a couple of films while watching or while painting, pardon me. So I think the first one I watched was Ernest Scared Stupid. I think that's what it's called. I, around Halloween season, I just love watching a good Halloween film. Uh, but I have a long list of Halloween films, so that's kind of like my plan for the October season is just watching that. 
or watching those films. Um, and it's a long list. Some of them I don't even watch. I definitely didn't make through half of my list this previous year or the year prior because it's a one, a long list, two, I'm busy with school, three, I'm not always in the mood for it. Like I have some films on there that are maybe a little bit more on the horror side and I'm rarely in the mood to watch horror at night. If anything, I'm going to watch it during the day because I don't feel so creeped out. <laughs> um, and then also I think my, I think I was spending a lot of the time just watching Buffy during that period of time, which I still need to finish. Uh, anyway, um, I'll pick it up. That's fine. I now have Buffy on DVD, so it's fine. I'll, I'll just pick it up probably again in this Halloween season. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I was entering like one of the better seasons too. So I don't know why I do this a lot though. I just like start watching something and then I drop. So I, I'm wondering at this point, because I'm starting to get a little bit more interested in what I'm watching. It must be Ernest because I'm smiling more. The next film was not a smiley occasion. Um, I'm about to be interrupted though, so I'm going to stop speaking for a second. Hello friends. So it is a different day. I had to go to work and then I just figured, you know, I just focus on that. But while I was doing so, I thought of some ideas. I also went shopping. So I went and picked up some things. Um, they didn't have titanium white at the store and they didn't have my usual stuff. So I got this zinc white, which maybe is not titanium white, but it's white enough, like me. But then I also got, cause I really decided, I was looking at this one and I noticed how much I just love the textures on this. And obviously um, it's not perfect. And I kind of like that it's not perfect, but I came up with some ideas on how to fix this. So I'm actually going to go back and work on this one. But I got, um, because I realized that I like these textures, I bought this stuff, which is a thickener for paint. This is like acrylic gel with small glass beads. And so basically it just, it provides like a nice texture to their paints. And so I figured that would like be really nice on the pots is like some textures um and then i also got this turquoise which obviously doesn't look turquoise due to this light but i got some turquoise paint in the same brand that i had the white in um and they were like oh this is final sale i'm like it's eight dollars and it's this much turquoise i'm okay with that <laughs> okay so i'm gonna work on these pots i decided that i'm gonna maybe go over this one again because it, it's not ugly i kind of like that design but she needs a little bit more work you know um meanwhile i'm gonna go and watch some videos for class i also <laughs> i keep forgetting things to say i did paint this one and i kind of like this idea but i realized i did it wrong what i'm supposed to do because i want this one to actually be a skyscrape of mountains i need to paint the background first for the mountains like or the sky and then paint the mountains. So I have to redo this one all over again, which is totally okay. But in the meantime, I'm gonna watch videos for class that I've been missing, so enjoy. So the next film I watched was for my philosophy of film class, which I kid you not was an amazing class. My professor was great. I'm pretty sure he's usually the only professor at the Univers University of Saskatchewan who teaches that course. This movie that I watched had me shook a few times. Um, I've heard of Alfred Hitchcock. I've seen a couple of his films. Everyone knows him as being one of the most iconic filmmakers of all time, not only because he was one of the first starters, but because of just even to this day, his artistic style still stands. There were moments, which you will see some clips of, where I just sat in confusion. And it, I was, I would literally stop what I was doing. So this film was called Vertigo, and of course it's an Alfred Hitchcock film. It is with, my goodness, I can't remember the actor's name, but he is in a, It's a Wonderful Life, and he's the main character. And I will not tell you more than that, because I don't want to give off any summary even. It's just so good. Every single detail of that film is so important to remember highly recommend if you're really into films. 
I love films. I could talk about them all day. I could watch them for years and still not be bored. I could continuously watch the same film. Uh, depending. Here's the thing. Um, if I'm going through something and that film's really speaking to me, I will watch it on repeat. Like, I'm pretty sure it was The Holiday, which by the way, there's so many Christmas films called something holiday. This one was just called The Holiday and that one really spoke to me that year. Cried so many times, watched it like four times. Really just love films. Anyway, so where was I saying? Okay, so let's talk about the pots. Um, I didn't really mention it in this video. Like I did talk about I don't like terracotta pots. I really did not explain why I don't like terracotta pots. Like I did explain, yes, they're just like ugly, but I mean, that's not truly the main reason. I would say most of the main reason is actually the texture. Um, and I did talk about wanting texture, don't get me wrong. Like I ended up adding glass beads into it, but there's a certain texture about the dry clay of a terracotta pot that it feels like nails on a chalkboard in terms of texture like I don't like the feeling of it I don't like the sound of my finger rubbing on the terracotta pot um it's just a texture thing mostly so even though I say I think it looks ugly I I think what I'm really saying is it feels ugly it, it doesn't mesh well with my senses <laughs> um and that's totally okay that other people enjoy terracotta pots i'm so happy for you that you do um also i think it's just uh, i tend to prefer color more than anything else like don't get me wrong i do love a natural texture another a natural color like plants are pretty natural i love the color of plants even if they're all green i just love that but I think when my plants are green, my pots are brown, you know, if I had white walls and, you know, gray carpet, like it's just so dull to me. I need a variety of color. And I think that's why you also can kind of see in my art room, I have a variety of paintings and varieties of colors. Often the colors I tend to prefer are actually more oceanic, oceanic colors or sunset colors which is why I even painted a pot that was sunset-like colors. Um, I tend to prefer more golds, blues, uh, deep purples, uh, some types of greens. Uh, and I think that's just tones that I prefer in general. I do love my reds as well, but uh, there's something about those other tones that are just very calming, very relaxing. And then occasionally I will add other pops of colors like red and yellow and I'm trying to think of other colors I might throw in. <laughs> but either way, uh, I really enjoy the variety of color, but consistency of brown and green is very pretty in nature. In home, it does feel a bit dreary, a little, you know, like m moody but like all the time. And I don't think I want to feel moody all the time. So I need color to kind of brighten my mood naturally. Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just making crap up and you can tell me in the comments that I'm just, you know, being ridiculous. Or, you know, maybe you could also like just, what is it called when you like assume some kind of behavior? I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm just rambling. Um, what was it? I think, I don't know if it was, I'm pretty sure when I was painting these pots, I watched another film, which I think it was called The Season of the Witch, which is a Halloween film as well. Honestly, I kind of sat there confused mildly disturbed and like I know that there's some deep reasoning behind it and like in terms of film buffers this one is a little bit more niche but a lot like pretty respected as well um, I don't know if I have any film of me actually sitting through watching that film or if it was some other project during that period of time that I was watching that film but I did 
Yep, that was my reaction to Vertigo right there. The ending was just, wait a minute. <laughs> so this entire time I'd been watching Vertigo. Um, okay, so something I kind of want to briefly mention in this video that I feel like might resonate with some people, even though it might be a little bit too much TMI, but I'm kind of going through this thing right now in my life, like a transition. It's not a bad thing. You know, whenever you say I'm going through something, it always sounds really, you know, like someone's like, oh no, I don't know if I want to hear your problems kind of thing. It's not a problem. I want to make that very clear. It's not a problem. I think I'm just, you know, having another revelation. Um, uh, obviously, I'm not going through it alone, so uh, don't worry about me. I'm good. But I think I want to share this because it's something that I think a lot of people can relate to. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to say this without giving out too much background. <laughs> um, do you ever just realize that a lot of your, uh, I'm sorry, this is not like a generic thing. It's not like everybody goes through this, but I do feel like a good amount of people could go through this where you kind of just assimilate yourself in a culture, um, not by your choice. It's something that like maybe you grew up in, or maybe it's something that, you know, going to school you get involved with. Like maybe if you grew up in a small town or Maybe if, you know, you grew up in a church background or maybe if you uh, grew up in a more strongly family oriented kind of background, I think it's very natural for this to kind of come up at some point where you realize when you start making friends outside of that, friendships get a little bit confusing because they're not what you're used to. And like, you kind of know that but you don't realize how much you're emotionally looking for that. And I think right now where I'm going through is I realized that I spent a lot of my life trying to fit myself in with communities, with friendships that I actually didn't fit with. And that's totally okay. Cause looking back now, I, I totally have my heart to myself. Like love you from afar. That was okay. You made a mistake. Oh, here's the ending of Vertigo. Yeah, that was my reaction right there. <laughs> that was, oh my goodness, that that film was so good though. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was confused for like a good five minutes after that. Look at my disturbed face. <laughs> but anyways, going back to what I was saying, um, you get yourself involved with friendships, with maybe romantic relationships or uh, communities, you know, where you want to either fit in maybe because you've been told that you need to fit in that community or because you're missing something in your own life and so you kind of force feed yourself into a relationship and I think as of late I've really I've really looked at some of the people that I used to really revere as my friends or people that I used to like really try to invest in um, and no shade to any of these people, because that's not what I'm saying. It's just, this is a, a, a conversation about my choices. I'm not talking about anybody else. Everybody has their own thing going on. Everybody fits in their own little niche. But I think what I'm trying to get at is I would pick relationships that didn't necessarily validate my interests. So for... Oh, pardon me. I hate it when I say fur. It's for. Why do I say fur? Like, I'm too Ontarian. <laughs> Anyways, so I think it's when you kind of try to fit into these relationships that you're, you have nothing in common with. And you don't even realize that because you, you're just trying to keep the relationship alive. So I realized that a lot of relationships, and when I say relationship, it doesn't mean romantic ones, but that can be applicable to ro romantic ones as well. You try to make your friendship, your relationship with your partner, you know, your family member, whatever it is to fit, but it's not the way you want to be communicated with. It's maybe not necessarily your similar interests. Like you might have nothing in common. And I think, for example, 
this is a good example of this is I love Halloween. I love watching Halloween films. I love t decorating Halloween stuff. And I realized that a lot of the people that I used to be friends with didn't really like that about me. They thought it was kind of weird. Um, not to say that they ever said it was weird, but I could say they'd be like, oh, don't take this personally, but you know, I'm just not interested in that. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I would just be like, that's fine. We can find something else in common. And then after a while, I realized that there was just very little in common that I had with certain people because I stopped talking about certain things with them because that was just not their interest. And so where I'm going with this is it, I think I'm in this transition in my life where I'm kind of looking back at things I love to do in my early 20s. I loved going to conventions and making cosplay. And I haven't done that in years, you know, partly because of the pandemic, partly because I got into school, so I got so busy. So and then partly also I don't have a sewing machine, but I used to really just do whatever I can to get to a convention, you know. Uh, save whatever little bit of money I have to make sure I could make a cosplay. Like just, yeah, maybe this is where I'm watching that weird film. I can't remember. Anyway, so I would just really force myself into these relationships where I realized that I wasn't talking about things I was interested in, but the other person, like I completely validated their feelings about things they were interested in. Um, and I wanted to, uh, like I, several years ago, I was friends with a bunch of people who are very sportsmen like, and I'm not very athletic. Um, I don't, I can't throw far and I can't run fast. I do enjoy working out. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not an athletic person. And I put myself in a situation where as much as I wanted to be into sports, it's okay that I'm not. And I can still watch the Super Bowl Sunday. I can still watch like March Madness and it doesn't require me to play those sports. And it doesn't mean that I have to force myself into relationships where people do that all the time. And it doesn't make me weird for not wanting to be involved with that. But I think as I'm getting older and I think this year I kind of really just took a lot of solitude. I really spent some time alone with myself um, and like had a very small circle, very small circle. Um, I think I realized that, you know, as much as you might have friends that say, hey, I'm totally here for you. Message me whenever you want. It's totally safe. But you realize that you're the one putting in the effort to be interested in their interests but they're not interested in yours. And again, that's totally okay that they're not interested in your interests. But if you're putting in so much energy to make a relationship work and they're not putting anything back, it's totally okay. But you don't need to force yourself to do that because I realized that, and this is where I'm going with this, is I'm not shaming anybody. Please don't misunderstand me. It's just... I put a lot of energy, my own energy, my mental space, my time into trying to make all these relationships work that were just not working. And that's okay because there are friends who get more along with maybe that person than I ever will. They'll understand that person on a level that I ever will. And there'll be people out there who will understand me on a level that maybe that other person will never understand me. I put so much emphasis on these trying to make myself fit in a community, into a relationship. But the truth is, is it's not very self-respecting, you know? Um, so I don't know, this is just something I've been thinking a lot lately. I don't want you to think that I'm like, you know, lecturing you. That's not what I mean. I just, I want to have a conversation about this. If anyone's actually like listening to this video, um, maybe you think I'm stepping over, stepping online, who knows, but, um, let me know your thoughts in the comments uh, or even just like DM me on Instagram at Sarah Spare Corner and just like, let's talk about it. Cause I think this is something that maybe is a little bit more hard in a transition to do. But anyways, here are the ending pot results. I just took a video of it now because I learned that I did not actually put out a video when I finished. So this one is that weird one I was looking at. I added in the bead textures, the glass bead textures into the gold 
but only on the gold. The red and the blues are just pretty solid. And I just kind of did some straight lines and I did paint inside the pot. This one was just a red straight pot with some gold in the middle and then gold around the edges. Um, pretty basic. Please don't judge all my pots because uh, there's no plant in them. Uh, oddly enough, I painted all these pots and there's only a couple of plants in them. But then also like our, my other plastic pots have stuff. So this poor plant died. I'm not gonna even explain what it is. This was probably my favorite one. You can see the gold and the white as the stars in the sky. Uh, the mountains that kind of remind me of like Dr. Seuss mountains. Uh, yeah, then there is this one, which is very boho vibes. Uh, but usually you would just do like a solid pattern like that all across. But I thought it would be nice to break it up with some gold and some color of blue because of course I love those sea colors. Um, <laughs> honestly, this kind of reminds me of when I dyed my hair blonde and blue. I kind of miss that. Maybe I'll do that sometime soon, but either way. Um, and then I also didn't paint inside that pot. So then I have this one, which is the first one I worked on. Please don't judge my aga uh, not agave, aloe vera. I cannot figure out aloe vera for the life of me. I feel like I've had three of them and they all die on me. I can never figure it out. Um, anyway, so this one, I think even though it's just so odd looking, I kind of, I don't know, there's something about it that kind of reminds me of like jewels, like, you know, maybe like mosaic jewels. I thought it was really pretty. And then I think I painted on the inside either a dark blue or a black. Um, but yeah, I think this was the first one I finished. Then this one's just like a solid gold. There's nothing growing in here. This stand I have in the background is literally where I just like um, germate my plants, but I have all my plants going, so there's nothing to germate. This one is a sparkly red with a mustard yellow. Then we have like a curly, curly kind of zebra pattern. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? That dress in the 2000s that everyone had for their prom dress in the States. That's, ex oh my goodness, that's exactly what that was. Okay, so this is a black and a gold pot. Um, and then the next one is just green. And then here is the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments about what you think about my pots. Let me know if you like to paint, paint, plot, bleh, 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 paint pots. Um, I also have a video coming up soon about all my plants that I've actually kind of germated in the last year. So look out for that one. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. Bye now.